very good evening to all our parents and our students who have taken time out today uh, for today's uh, webinar. And of course, since all of you are already aware, we have with us Professor Rodolphe with us, who is the Vice Dean uh, of the Charles Faculty, HK. And uh, along with us, uh, who's going to take us today with the entire presentation and uh, any questions, please feel free to ask him. And all of you who have already attended our webinars with Gyanberry, so myself is Pranali Damankar, and I'm also going to be once again taking you all with the webinar. Uh, and I will not take more time because I want to dedicate this whole one hour to the faculty. So just quick uh, introduction about Ganberry. As everybody knows, Ganberry provides one-on-one -on -one personalized assistance and guidance throughout the admission process. And our assistance is free of charge. Students pay only for application fee to the university. We also have service with us, which is Super Mentor, which is one-on-one -on -one mentoring from senior students at the university. The entire agenda is going to be of 60 minutes, uh, presentation of 30 minutes, and Q&A for 20 to 25 minutes. So without wasting any more time, I would hand over the presentation for a uh, professor to carry forward with the introduction. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Pranali. And just, uh, I'm very happy just to, to, to be in front of the screen and, and I talk to you from from Czech Republic, from, from the place called HK, which is an abbreviation. And that's just, uh, the full name is Radis Kralova, but it's probably very difficult to pronounce. So that's why we put in the HK. Uh, we have a very early afternoon here. Uh, unlike you, you have a three hours ahead. So for you to a uh, very good uh, late afternoon or just very good evening. Also, we have in today very, an exceptionally very nice day. It's kind of full sunshine and beautiful, almost like a very early spring. So it makes me even more happy. And I'll be very happy just to share with you a couple of information over the faculty. So now let me just try to, just to, to share the presentation with you. Um, um, hopefully you, you see the, the, the front slide. And yes, Professor, be able to also the um, to see the other slide. So, let me give you first a broad outline, even though I think that you might know who we are, but just, um, just for the sake of um, a little uh, sort of closing, the Czech Republic is um, a very small country, which sits right in the heart of the Europe. It's on the left-hand side. Hopefully you see it. It's just kind of reddish spot, just uh, surrounded with the, with the Germany, Austria, and other Eastern and Western countries. Uh, as with us on the right-hand side, it's kind of a little map uh, where it shows the, the most important the places or the names of the uh, of cities and towns. Of course, the central one is the Prague, which is our display case. And most of the tourists come to Prague and they enjoy it. And this is a special tent and this is also where our largest airport is. So this is where the, the students of ours from abroad eventually land. And the first thing is the first contact. We are not, of course, in the Prague. We are slightly on the east. If you go the right and the east, uh, you will end up with the Eastern Bohemian region where the place called HK is, is the place here. We're close to the mountains, so that's unlike the, uh, the flat area of Prague is. Uh, our Faculty of Medicine is a part of the Charles University. Uh, a lot of questions uh, we usually receive is about what is the standing of the Charles University and this and that. Of course, the standing of the university is the best uh, within the Czech, Czech universities, and at the moment, uh, I guess uh, one of those uh, one of those ranking systems it ranks about 100th or something in the place in the world, which is not that bad. So we may claim that it's internationally recognized. It's also the largest university because it's uh, together uh, made of uh, 17 different faculties. Most of them are in the Prague, but uh, some of them are also outside the Prague, including the one in, in the HK. What is very confusing point sometimes for, uh, for those who are interested to study medicine with the Charles is that, you know, if they wanna apply to Charles, they also have to apply to the particular faculty of medicine or say a campus, uh, which is uh, present in a five different, you would say like a copy, so five different places. 
the three faculties of medicine are in Prague, Prague 1, Prague 2, and Prague 3. And two of them are outside of Prague, one in uh, HK and another one in a Pilsen. Together, these five faculties of medicine, including other faculties of other um, the subjects, uh, um, you know, uh, amount to up, up to about 50,000 students in total, uh, out to almost 20% are international from around the world, and they do study different, uh, different subjects and different fields. Now, uh, talking a little bit about the, uh, the Faculty of Medicine in Radis Kralova. Uh, at the moment, that is for the upcoming academic year, uh, which will be opened uh, or which will start this, uh, this autumn, uh, that is uh, 1st of October, 22. So typical academic year, 22, 23, we do offer just a single uh, study program in English and that is the general medicine. Uh, this uh, general medicine program is uh, typically the program uh, we call a master study program. Uh, sometimes again, some students are confused because in in, in different countries, uh, the masters for them means like a postgraduate training. In, in our case, uh, the masters uh, study program or this uh, general medicine is undergraduate program. So it's uh, the full time that is, it, it must be studied in person. There's no way we studied in, in a distance way or something. And it lasts six years. And at the end of successful completion of the studies, uh, um, um, the graduate is uh, entitled to, or is given the title MD, or actually here local one called MUDR, which is equivalent to MD. Uh, this title is internationally recognized, and it authorizes SBER just to uh, enter the postgraduate uh, specialization training in most of the countries in the world. I'll come back to it later on. Uh, our general medicine program is not meant for uh, many people. That's one of the differences between the individual faculties of medicine, even within Charles. So we uh, we have a maximum capacity at the moment for about 100 plus or minus uh, uh, the students uh, each year. Each year, uh, totally at the moment we have in all six years about the 334 students. So definitely we don't really take the full quota. And uh, definitely also uh, not all students who are at the very beginning, very enthusiastic, have the chance to complete the studies. But that's a different story. I'm not going to speak about it right now. The study is in English and the study is, is not covered by any, uh, by any special sort of support from the government. So there's a tuition fees. Tuition fees uh, for this upcoming, um, the academic year 22-23, is still uh, the same as used to be before, that is uh, roughly 12,000 euros. For those of you to have a better idea, it's roughly about the 52,000 dirhams, uh, UAE dirhams, in case that you, uh, you're trying to calculate conversion or in other terms, it could be something slightly more than, uh, than, two, than, uh, than about 13,000 US dollar a year. It's a yearly, yearly fee which uh, when the student enters the faculty and enrolls the program will be the, all the same, all the six years a student studies with us and pays. So even if there will be some changes in tuition fee in the meantime, while the student is still studying with us, uh, it won't be just uh, applied to him or to her because uh, you know uh, the principle of the stability over the tuition fees is applied to every one of our students. Now, um, uh, of course, the, the studies of medicine is got a lot of theory, but especially a lot of uh, practical training. A lot of practical training happens in the faculty teaching hospital or university hospital, which is next door to our faculty. It's the largest medical facility in this Eastern Bohemian region with a, a lot of people involved, a lot of professionals, but also a lot of patients. And as such, uh, the place exercises or actually enjoys the special status being a center of excellence. Uh, for certain fields of medicine. So that's why the students can benefit from the state of the art techniques, equipment, and they, they could come across the latest uh, technologies. Now, uh, how, because that's just the most practical thing, how does the, the, the process of admission or the process of um, entry is organized? It's very simple. Admissions are open uh, in terms of the application until the end of April 22. The application is kind of online. 
So no need to, to worry about it in case that you're still kind of worried and have a ha hesitations. Of course, you can always ask the, our partners in, 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 in Gyanbiri, or you could just ask us for certain assistance in order to help you. Other than that, it's sort of like a filling in an online application form, which when uh, submitted would not be completely uh, be finished or which not be com completely uh, uh, set until a certain um, uh, the fee is paid. This fee is roughly about the 30 uh, pounds. That is uh, something about the 800 crowns, which is, we, we believe is not really too high. Uh, who can apply? Everyone who has completed secondary education. Uh, again, here the students often ask, do I have to have a completed education at the time of, 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 of application? The answer is resounding no. We need uh, that uh, the applicant uh, 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 at the latest and the one who is admitted by us and who enrolls to the course presents the credentials that is the completed secondary school school leaving certificate by the latest, uh, uh, you know, with the enrollment day. So still, I mean, students could still study the secondary school to be before the final exams before they could, they they just, uh, and they could stay, sit our entrance exam and that's sort of like, okay. So completion of secondary school, where we don't really look at the uh, grades, we don't look at the subjects, as long as uh, you know the secondary school format uh, conforms to the nostrification process, which is the question by itself. Uh, the student has to pass only the written one round entrance exam test, which is, as you can see, composed of the four different segments. Two of them are biology and biology related, that is biology, and basic human biology. We don't have to worry about anatomy and physiology and Latin terminology. It really looks really complicated, but it is not. It's a really basic composition of the systems of the human body. It's within the normal knowledge of the secondary school. Then chemistry and then physics. Each segment is worth of 20 questions and each question is multiple choice, this question. And with one answer only possible, uh, so in total, a person could uh, could score up to 80 points. And of course, the more points the person score, higher is the chance just that he or she is admitted. Normally, a cutoff, a cutoff uh, you know, line is uh, around the 50%. Results are uh, available within a couple of days. And, you know, they're kind of communicated to the agency and they're communicated, of course, to, to you. One sort of... Um, issue with the answering of the questions, though, is the fact that a student has to really, or a candidate has to really uh, figure out whether uh, answer to this question is really sure bad, and whether he or she risks answering this question, because if he risks it and he answers it right, he gets the one point. In the opposite uh, situation, or uh, on, if the, and the question is not answered correctly, unfortunately, the person will lose about a quarter of the point. Whereas if uh, the student says, well, the question is kind of, you know, for me, not that clear, and I don't really dare to answer it and leave it out and leaves it out, that's okay, because uh, in that case, no points are either given or deduced. So simply there is like a zero thing. So, uh, you know, answering of the questions is not some, something like a lottery when we close the eye. And if we're lucky, we, we just actually uh, come across the, the right answers but it has to be backed with a certain knowledge and certain, certain uh, reasoning. How do you prepare for the test? Because the test itself uh, might sound like uh, intimidating. No, it is not. Uh, there is in our web page, which will be provided at the very end of the seminar. But again, you can very easily approach it as long as you search out on the Google, uh, the Faculty of Medicine in HK. So there is an example test. This is the full version of the test from the last year, which is free for download. And it could be freely downloaded, uh, including the right answers. And the students know exactly what kind of questions are asked and what kind of like answers are expected. In case that some of these questions or some of the topics do not really bring any further clarification. So next door or next place to the example test is a recommended literature and a syllabus for each subject. So the person knows exactly which uh, uh, sources we use for for questions and what sort of knowledge, which level of the knowledge is required. So in that way, uh, you know, there should be uh, no further uh, further confusion, which 
in some cases still exists. So in that case, we recommend that you just uh, contact us uh, based on an email or via the agency or something, just to make uh, the points uh, of the interest uh, clarified up till the best. Okay. Now, um, now a little bit about this, uh, you know, what, what does it take to, to, to study medicine uh, with our faculty? So what do we study when and how? Uh, it's a typical organization of study is, is with the with academic year. The academic year, this is not what, what, what we as a faculty could do something about. It's, it's the same for the inter Charles University, typically beginning the 1st of October and ending at 30th of, of uh, September next year. The study is broken down into two segments or two semesters, winter semester, which typically lasts from October to January and summer semester in February and May. In between, there are so-called the uh, exam periods, typically January, February. Right now, uh, right now is, the, is just the ending of the, uh, the winter examination period when the students take no classes and, and they're simply at home or wherever place they are, and they study prepare themselves for the exams. They're kind of, uh, they need to sit uh, for this examination period. And the same uh, happens also in the summer exam period, which is from the end of May, usually June, beginning of July, and then with some summer recess. And again, some exams could be, could be set in September. Study, uh, the form of the study is, is a blend, is a blend of traditional, that is uh, in-person lectures, uh, the practical classes and seminars, and also practices. Some of them, because of current situation, it could also be done optionally in a hybrid form that is either as an interactive electronic uh, or e-courses e or, or just sort of uh, online, uh, not with the Zoom, but we have a MS Teams, Microsoft Teams or other platforms with, with which we could, uh, we could interact and teach students. Um, so that's basically what the students do. They need to go to classes either in person or they need to be present and online and this and that. So I guess it's just not that much su uh, surprising. Uh, I mentioned exams. What are these exams about? Exams uh, are in the two categories. Uh, there are the exams which are usually given throughout the course for a particular subject that is throughout the semester. Uh, many of them are kind of written. They're like a progress test or micro tests which are designed to, to monitor the progress of the student into into the practical course. And at the end of the course, it's usually one final exam, which is oral, mostly uh, oral. Uh, that is, uh, the student comes, chooses from the questions which he or she knows in advance and sits uh, face to face to an examiner or to an examination board, depending upon what kind of exam it is, and answers the questions. And if it's satisfactory, it passes, if not, he has or she has uh, two, two other attempts or two other retakes. So together, each exam could be repeated or could be done essentially three times. So the, the one regularly, one regular, and the two so-called the uh, so-called the retakes. Now, um, yeah, th there is one other thing concerning study, which I do not want just to discuss in, in detail and at length. And that is um, uh, the fact that since the HK and the, Char and the Charles University in Czech Republic is a part of EU, and the EU has a specific format for the study. So even the studies of medicine in EU country has to conform to so-called the credit format, meaning that the students while passing the subject, they also have to accumulate certain number of credit points. Uh, they are worth of each, each sub this subject. And this is where sometimes some confusion arises or where the students need to be very attentive and need to really follow uh, these numbers because, because uh, these numbers ultimately might determine whether the given student is successful and passes the years and enrolls in the next segment of the study or has to stop for a while or his or her study would be, would be uh, you know, terminated because you know, these numbers really didn't match. So, so that's the one other side of the story which which I'm not showing because it's not of your interest at the moment, but you know, you'll be in detail informed about this, um, about this format or about this credit re requirements uh, once you're enrolled or once the student is enrolled to our study program. Uh, and uh, we have this specific uh, lecture, uh, lecture for you. 
Now, uh, you know, what remains to be stated is just why, why should you consider uh, kind of HK? Uh, because ultimately you may, you may reason, okay, there are many other places and they offer exactly the same. So what's the selling point? Uh, what is uh, sort of, uh, the, the, what are the arguments for choosing HK? Well, here are some of them, a couple of them are, you know, arguments. Remember that this is not a presentation of the travel agent who tries to sell the best place for your next holiday. Because even if you choose, if you choose us, your holiday is going to be very long with us. So it's just not like a four, 14 days, but it should be, it's meant to be six years. But nevertheless, there are certain sort of like a point. The HK is not a really large place, especially compared to the most of the, the huge places many students come from. Certainly, it's, it's in terms of, for instance, Dubai, in terms of Abu Dhabi, in terms of Prague, it's uh, the, the town. Uh, town, which is about 100,000 inhabitants, many of them are students because, because in, in HK there are some other universities other than Charles too. Other than that, it, you know, it has been laid on the uh, confluence of two rivers, so, uh, and it's full of greenery, full, full, full of parks and things, so it's it's smaller, it's, it's very pleasant, calm, and academically very inspiring because there is not really bustling and rush and frenzy of the, of the large place. So it's also kind of safe. The safety is in a way absolute and not absolute. What does it mean? Safety means that you know, you know, we should not be really afraid of any personal assaults or something, but it's not absolutely safe that for instance, that if you have your, your purse, your credentials, your money, everything left freely on the street, and you forget about this, and you come back after two days, and so you 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 might not be expected to find it there. So that's perhaps slightly different than in other places, which are truly, true, truly super super insulated and thing. But it's still kind of very very safe, and pickpocketing, stealing is very is very low. Uh, the, another selling point is kind of it's if we're smaller means that everything is uh, easily available and accessible even by walking, bicycling, something like an Oxford or something. So you, you don't really waste a lot of time if you commute from one place to, to another. Uh, another good, uh, good news for our students is that, that their study materials, that especially books, which in case of medicine could be really big, heavy and expensive, including also e-databases and other things are provided to you uh, to our students for free in one of our specialized libraries where the students really uh, collect them and of course with the access from uh, from from computer from computers um, our study uh, facilities even though some of them are traditionally old they've been completely refurbished renovated and and therefore they are uh, they're of the very uh, nice uh, modern more modern standards we're now building a a second phase of the new campus, uh, which means that you know the place itself seems seems not only like uh, clean, but also really purposeful. That is something the students might also appreciate. So it's just not really dilapidated or somehow somehow used and and neglected. And that means also that we could bring some uh, new approaches to the studies, like typically our uh, studies with where the students learn things in a simulation center, where they work with the really state-of-the-art dummies and the models, which uh, are aimed to, and then these trainings is aimed for them to learn the confidence and learn the certain routine before they touch their hands with the patients, and that greatly also enhances the uh, the the skills. This center, of course, been set up um, a few years ago and is constantly developing and. And, and growing so the more and more students would be able to uh, to to learn medicine at least in some segments even through this uh, this uh, modern uh, techniques yeah as I said the modern uh, facility so-called campus this is already the building of the campus which is sitting uh, right here uh, I'm just showing with the cursor is where I am not right now sitting in front of my computer and talking to you so because my department is just over here, the, the, the upstairs is by chemistry department, but very nice thing about this uh, first building of campus, new campuses, that is about 100 meters from the entry point to the uh, university hospital. So uh, besides being really uh, brand new, 
uh, and also very mo modern. It's also very close to the hospital, which comes along the, uh, the trends that everything should be should be within uh, within uh, within very uh, short uh, walking distance. Uh, this building would be supplemented with another large building, which is now uh, being projected, and which we hope just to uh, to to build very quickly in order to move from the older facilities just to these brand, brand, new, brand new ones. Right, uh, well, while studying, uh, because lots of students, uh, they wanna later on continue with their, with their uh, postgrad training and even their research abroad, especially in the UK, US, and other places. And that is therefore very convenient for them because, we, uh, because they could learn experience and they could set up the essential context while still being our students because because a part of the studying with us or studying with or taking the classes, the students could also involve in their research and which is organized by our departments, including the much cherished competition for, for the research stay in uh, the Mayo Clinic in Rochester in the US, which is top, top uh, research and medical facility in the US. And every year we offer a couple of students such as Chance, they're usually top achievers, and they would go there for a three month stay uh, professors from uh, from Mayo Clinic will come here in person or the online interview and the students would have a really unforgettable experience and also uh, lots of uh, important important context built up in there. So that's another sort of like a bonus we could throw in in order to make the studies more more attractive to our students. Well, um, yeah, the, the, the rest is what you would come to expect in the modern facilities that is um, uh, that we got the accommodation. Concerning the accommodation, our international students could stay with the dorms, which are available to them, but most of them, they opt for, for the private apartments. The private apartments are, are very convenient for them because they're closer to, to, to teaching facilities. They could be shared with their, with their friends, and they're simply getting together because, uh, you know, the cl classical and traditional dorm or dormitory is meant for Czech students, and it has a shared bathroom and things. So some students really don't prefer to do it that way, but this is kind of option. And in case the students opt for, for the private flats or rental, uh, we have the companies and they meet, they've been mediating these services for quite a long time now. So not a problem on this front. That includes also the food uh, services, which uh, compared to many countries are kind of uh, on the high standard for um, uh, very reasonable reasonable prices, but that's just uh, something which we have. Now, this is kind of, I, I think, important because uh, medical studies, especially the, the, the beginning of medical study for students from abroad who need to adapt on a very short short time interval, and they don't really have the time to, to, to really digest the environmental changes because they're, uh, they're kind of busy with the studies. Sometimes they do face the difficulties, they do face certain hardships, and and some of them, they also struggle, not only academically, but also they struggle psychologically. They are homesick. Uh, they feel alone. You know, they, and in that case, of course, they don't need to worry because there's lots of um, uh, save line nets we, we've provided. So first of all, it's an easy access to all of us teachers, including myself, that any student who feels or, or that needs some, some sort of talk and help, help from us, um, due to different reasons is always uh, open doors. In case of more serious and more specialized sort of issues, we have the, uh, the professionals, we have the trained psychologists and the con uh, consultants who could uh, provide much higher grade of the service and, and needed help in case uh, you know, the issues are being uh, more, more specific. The only thing it takes is that our students tell us, look, we've got the problem. So can we sort of like a, sort it out? And things. So this should prevent uh, uh, prevent these issues being being the reason for the students uh, the lack of success in the studies. And that's quite important, especially for first year first year students or fresh fresh first year students. Well, how to how to fight the stress and how to ease the ad adaptation, especially for the newcomers. That's just uh, to be to be involved and to be engaged in in extracurricular activities. Uh, of course, we uh, we offer a selection of different social and the sport sport um, activities that students individually could plan in and could 
uh, could could take part in and could could actually use and and be and be active in that. Uh, the one other thing is that they could be greatly helped with that because our international students have their, their professional organization. It's called the International Student Union, uh, which takes care of a lot of things like orientation week for the newcomers, organization of the cultural and sport activities, meeting in context with our dean, this is our dean, Professor Professor Manjak, and with the former president and uh, and the and the president in 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 deputy of the ISU. Uh, they have their own activity called the grads night and whatever else in order to make the make the life uh, of the student not only not only inspiring in terms of academic achievements but also in terms of the full human life so uh, the entertainment measure of uh, the learning about the environment measure of learning of learning about the country and having the opp opportunity and a possibility to to advance uh, the personal personal development. Well, yeah, that's that's that, that's the thing. The events are multiple. It only takes to organize the time and show the interest to 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 be involved in you know in these in these activities. Pretty much like any other faculty or modern faculty or modern university uh, university offers. In the end, uh, once the students uh, successfully complete the final state exams. In the sixth year, they're invited for the graduation ceremony, which takes place in the oldest uh, building or oldest facility of the Charles University in Prague or Carolina. So the graduation becomes really unforgettable experience. And the student, now the graduate doctor, becomes a member of our alumni club, uh, which is meant for keeping in touch and helping others to, to learn about us and helping also uh, those who already left us with the further further uh, development so that's something that you know once we graduate you graduate from the school you're not kind of you're not kind of cutting off whatever you happened in the past six years but you're still a member of and the cherished cherished uh, the, the the part of the entire academic community well i'm almost at the very end because it's not meant to take you uh, to 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 occupy too much and think of course, um, the, in case of any questions and inquiries, we'd be most happy to, to share them uh, with you or to enter them. So here's a couple of contacts. So this is uh, the, our address and especially the email uh, where the all inquiries could be, could be kind of dropped and or their telephone numbers. Incidentally, uh, if you prefer to have the social media, you may, you may drop the messages and whatever you, you want to do. Finally, last thing, I'd like also to invite you, because for the first time in the history of our faculty, we do organize the open day, which is scheduled for tomorrow. Tomorrow in person, it's probably not for you, but this will be also on air. Uh, so it'll be live. Uh, so you can very easily join in and think, see what's going on. And just to have my talk a little bit more expanded to, to talk to students and think simply to, to see what it takes to, to, to be with us. Okay, with that uh, I'd like to thank you pretty much for your for your uh, attention. I hope that I uh, gave you some some initial info, and you'll be now uh, more uh, more decisive and more uh, more learned in terms of what what we are, who we are, and what we offer, and whether uh, you might consider us as uh, one of our uh, choices. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor. I think uh, that brings us at the end of the Q&A. I am aware that a lot of parents and students are asking or having too many questions. Uh, what you can do is, since we are running out of time, you can write to Ganberry and we will address it individually uh, as your questions are coming up. But thank you so much for your time. and. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, Professor, we'll have all these students today who have attended the webinar, uh, who are already sitting for the 19th February exams. We will see, we'll see them at the entrance exam. And those who are looking at next year, uh, wish you all the best. Uh, and please come forward if you have any more questions and Ganberi will be there to address it. So thank you very much. Thank you for your time. And thank you, Professor, for today. It was lovely having you for the presentation and it was wonderful. Yeah, it was a pleasure on my side and wish you a very nice uh, evening uh, and lots of luck and success. 
Thank you, Professor. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Take care. Bye. Bye.